Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. Um, I shouldn't open this yet. I'm going to put it away and keep it safe. Um, Lord Mayor, Andrew Montague, City Manager, John Tierney, City Librarian, Margaret Hayes. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. This is a tremendous honor. It means an awful lot to me, and it's especially pleasing to receive this award in Dublin, from Dublin, a city where I've always felt welcome and which has always been good to me. I was told I should say a few words, um, but you'll have to bear with me. It always amuses me when they put writers on a stage and ask them to be both articulate and audible. <laughs> Most writers are actually mumbling odd jobs who are best left in a darkened room with a pad of paper. But I will give it a shot. Um, and I'll try and be brief because I know you're all hungry. But I'll start as my father, who stood up in front of a crowd every Sunday to say a few words, always used to do. I'll start with a joke. It is a literary joke, but you seem like a literary crowd. So I'll give it a shot. Samuel Beckett and Harold Pinter walk into a bar. They're both wearing bear costumes. Sam Beckett looks at the barman and says nothing. The barman looks at Sam Beckett and says nothing. The barman turns to Harold Pinter and asks what he's having. Harold Pinter lifts the head of his bear costume and says, I'll have two pints of Guinness and... <laughs> a packet of crisps, please. <laughs> sure thing, says the barman, but why the big pause? Thanks very much. <laughs> Little private dream of mine to be a stand-up comic. Um, so I just I wanted to tell you a story, actually, um, about another book, not about even the dogs, um, but a much slimmer volume. My wife, Alice, is a mental health support worker with an organization which works with homeless people. Um, it's challenging work, as you can probably imagine, and if you'll excuse the jargon, the measurable outcomes are fairly few and far between. And in her office, they keep this notebook in which members of staff are encouraged to write up examples of work with service users which have gone particularly well. Somebody making contact with an estranged family member, for example, or attending a rehab session, or, or being rehoused. And the book is called Back of the Net. It's a very, very slim volume. Let me give you one example of a man I'll call Alan. Alan was living on the street, using heroin and other drugs, sleeping in public toilets, injecting into parts of his body that you're really not supposed to inject into. He'd lost his job, his relationship, and his family. And somehow he came out the other side. Somebody, my wife in fact, talked him into engaging with the various support services which were on offer. And he had the very good fortune to get access to a residential rehab center, and the even better fortune and the tremendous strength of character to make a success of that rehab. He's remarried now and he lives in the country with a young son and a very productive vegetable garden, which is a hell of an achievement. Most of the achievements in the back of the net book are a lot smaller than that. It's a hell of an achievement on the part of Alan, and it was also, and I say this with shameless pride, a hell of an achievement on the part of my wife. And she's never gonna win an award for that, although she did get to put it in the back of the net book. And there are thousands of people like her who do the difficult and messy and demoralizing work that most of us wouldn't have a clue how to do. The picking up the pieces and mopping up the sick and finding the bodies type of work. None of them will win awards for the work they do. In fact, quite the opposite. These are the very people who, while we're supposedly tightening our belts, are losing their jobs in droves, just as we need the work they do more than ever. Because, obviously, we're all in this together. So I want to dedicate this award to those people, to my wife, Alice, and to her colleagues, and to all the thousands of people who do those near impossible jobs of trying to pick up the pieces. I also want to thank Alan and others like him who shared some of their knowledge and their experiences with me and helped me to go some way towards making sure I wrote a book that made sense to the people who've been there. And I want to thank the many professionals who also share their expertise and their time, making sure I got the details right, as well as demonstrating that the idea that society doesn't care about people in this kind of trouble is actually a false one. 
there are some people in society who take the job of caring very, very seriously. I also want to thank the M.I. Rudomino State, State Library for Foreign Literature in Moscow, who were the only library who nominated even the dogs for this fantastic award. And I want to thank the library on Ketz Hill in Norwich, which is where I did all of my childhood reading and taught me a love of books. I want to thank the judges, of course, for defying my instinct that this book was somehow prize-proof and that there would always be at least two people on any jury who couldn't stand it. And I want to thank the city of Dublin for hosting this wonderful award, which casts its net so widely and so consistently comes up with excellent and worthy shortlists and winners. I realize that I would say that at this point. <laughs> I also want to thank the booksellers and the critics in Dublin and in Ireland for the welcome they've always shown me and the way they go about their work with, with such a refreshing intellectual vigor. In particular, I'd like to thank Eileen Battersby for having been such a vocal champion of this book and for having given my first book such a bracing critique that I was really forced to re-examine some of my own ideas about writing. I want to say thank you to everyone at Bloomsbury for bringing this unlikely novel into print, to Rosemary Davidson, who originally commissioned it, and to my editor, Helen Garnons-Williams, who took it on and did such a fine job of helping me bring it into focus. Also, to Erica Jans, Sarah Jane Forder, David Mann, and Heather Goldstein for turning it into a very fine example of a holdable, readable, cherishable book. You should really look out for the first editions. There's something very special. I want to thank Katie Bond, also at Bloomsbury, and her team for somehow persuading booksellers to sell this book and persuading critics to talk about it, and for doing that same job so well here in Ireland to the excellent rep force. To Cormac Kinsella, thanks a mill. And I want to thank Tracy Bowen, my agent, who has done so much more for me than simply talk people into offering me book contracts. She's nurtured my writing and my career, and I would be lost in the margins without her. But most of all, and finally, to get back to where I started, I want to thank my wife, Alice. She was planning to be here tonight, and she was looking forward to it. She'd even bought a new dress. But at the last minute, she was unable to travel. So she sends her regards. This book wouldn't have been written without her. Thank you all very much for being here tonight, and have a wonderful evening. Thank you.